Hi, welcome everybody, it's me, Dr. Carl Litterdeck, and you've tuned in to the Medical Mysteries Tour, a weekly podcast or vlog where we're, we, where we're going to discuss medical mysteries that have baffled medics and individuals for centuries, topics that will excite the imagination, intrigue you, and, and fascinate us into the wonderful world of medical mysteries. A lot of you are already subscribers to lipomasis.com, our one-stop shop for cysts and lipoma removal. But due to popular demand, we're gonna go and try something new. We're gonna try this weekly installment. Every week is gonna get better. And today, we've got a special guest. We've got, you will be waiting for him, Prince Azam, the man behind the cam, a very, very eminent physician by his own right. Mr. Ahmed, welcome to the team, Prince Azam. There's going to be no doubt a lot of hitches with the technical aspects, but we're going to try our best and get, get this uh, show on the road. So today's discussion, we're going to be talking about people who are allergic to water. Well, that's right. Water, something that you and I take for granted, we consume on a daily basis, thinking nothing of it, that tasteless liquid that keeps us hydrated we take for granted as being a very healthy substitute in our diet. But for some people, for some individual, coming into contact causes massive skin reactions. And we're gonna be discussing people who are allergic to water. Mr. Ahmed, please, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Where are you, where are you located? Tell us. Hello, Dr. K, and thank you for very kindly inviting me into your inaugural show on Medical Mysteries. I'm super delighted and excited to be your first guest on the show. Uh, thank you very much. Um, some of you may already know me as Prince of Zam, the man behind the cam. Um, I'm also a physician, a physician surgeon and an academic, and I'm delighted to be joining Dr. Khalid um, today to discuss this really fascinating topic of um, aquagenic um, urticaria or allergy to water. Thank you. And I'm in London. Fantastic. Now, you've come to join us in this meeting. It's the first one, so we're going to get things right eventually. And I know that before we went live, we had an absolute uh, panic when we lost the audio. So if the audio isn't as crisp and clear, as it should be, then you'll know why. Isn't that right? Yeah, we, we, it was a bit of a challenge, um, but we, we actually beat it and we got through in the nick of time in the last few seconds before the show went live. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it was literally um, sitting on, the, on the, the edge there. So I thought we'd crack on by doing So what I want to do is I want to crack on with our first jingle. So let's do that. I'm Dr. Carl Litterdeck. Welcome to Medical Mysteries. Every Friday at 9.30, Greenwich Mean Time. There we go, our specially prepared jingle for today's mystery tour. So Mr. Armin, let's kick off. Tell me, tell me, people allergic to water, what, what is the story there? So, it's a remarkably rare condition, but as you can imagine, being allergic to water would be an absolute nightmare. Um, the medical term for it is aquagenic urticaria and you may have all come across the term urticaria and that, that in essence is just an allergy to something which results in you developing a rash um, and itching. Unfortunately, very rarely in the literature suggests there are probably about 60 or so cases in the world um, people who are actually allergic to water which is terrible because water is an essential um, um, thing for life and as you can imagine we have sweat we have tears and um, if you sweat or have tears or are, drink water and you develop a rash that's very difficult and as you know rashes can be exaggerated and you can end up having a massive allergic reaction what we call an anaphylaxis 
Um, the condition, surprisingly, was described in the 60s, so it's been around for some time, but fortunately there aren't many people with it. So you're telling me that these individuals are allergic to their own sweat? Unbelievable as it may be, but yeah, that appears to be the case. Some of them are allergic to their own sweat, they're allergic to their own tears, they're allergic to rain. And um, we prepared a few cases to go through together and uh, we'll discuss what those patients have um, suffered and how they've dealt with it and how the uh, medical staff have helped them succumb this problem. Yeah, yeah. So I will, I'll start the, uh, the, uh, the slides. Why don't you just talk us through it? I mean, this sounds like an entirely bizarre phenomenon. How can you be allergic to your own sweat? I mean, what happens when they drink water? Are they, are they able to drink? Are they able to consume it? So, having read about this and investigated the, um, the cases out there, it's unbelievable, but absolutely they can develop an allergy to water their own sweat. Fortunately, this is something that develops um, in, in puberty. So it's very lucky because obviously when you're a baby and um, you, you, should you develop something so unfortunate, it would be very difficult to come up with the diagnosis. And it's something that seems to start when you have a sudden development in your immune system. So more often than not, most of the cases are described in puberty. Um, it is a medical mystery. Um, and very often these patients are investigated for a whole gamut of problems and they don't really know what's caused it. And it's only when they tell their story that the physicians and the dermatologists looking after them actually un fully understand that it's the water that's caused the problem. Now, if we go through the slides that you've um, got, Dr. K, that'd be great. Um, the most common thing that comes up is hives, which is basically a rash. Um, and that's what, what's noticed first. And some of us may have developed hives because sometimes you get heat rash or nettle rash, and that's exactly what that is. Um, and it's an itchy, raised um, dermatological problem. Fortunately, we've got plenty of medication um, to help with this. And those of you who suffer hay fever have probably taken antihistamines. And antihistamines are really good at treating this problem. Are these the same antihistamines you might use for, say, like hay fever, allergic rhinitis, the stuff you kind of get in the summer pollen season? Absolutely, absolutely. Obviously, there are different types of antihistamines yeah. uh, and different generations of them, and some are more effective than others. But you're absolutely right. Um, and it's those very antihistamines that, um, that help. So when you, when you refer to this allergy, this, this water allergy, you described it as being aquagenic. So that means, I guess, in Latin, aqua means water, genic means of origin. But you use the term urticaria. Now, a lot of us are very familiar with urticaria. That's like hives and wheels, the kind of stuff you kind of just get randomly. A lot of people just will, I know from my practice, a lot of people come in and they've got these hives and wheels, similar to the ones you've showing us here on the slides. But I'm guessing in these individuals, it just doesn't go away. It's just persistently there. So you're absolutely right. They, they develop the hives. And fortunately, um, because there are so few cases and they're all very well investigated, what ends up happening is that they prophylactically take antihistamines. Um, so they take the antihistamines regularly, as we would do for hay fever, um, to stop them getting the, the hives or the rash or the anaphylaxis as a result of being exposed to water. So it's very much a preventative measure. Um, which enables them to go on with their daily lives. Um, obviously, they have to take precautions. So some may ask, how do you take a shower? Yeah, so it's actually quite fascinating you say that they take it prophylactically, because my understanding of how hay fever works is it's like a bit of a fire. You know, once you're exposed to the pollen, the fire has already started, and then the more pollen you have, the bigger the fire. What you're saying is, let's stop the fire from starting in the first place, and therefore it's spreading further. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. So we know hay fever and all types of allergies um, are driven by uh, mast cells. Those yeah. are the cells that drive allergic reactions. They're, they're really powerful immune cells, and they're also the cells that are implicated in hay fever. Um, and it's the antihistamines that block the effect of these cells. Mm. And that's the common stem for both aquagenic 
urticaria and hay fever and other allergic reactions. So it's almost like saying, yes, they have an allergy to water, but I'm guessing they didn't always have an allergy because like these people kind of just develop it like they might have done with urticaria because in the large proportion of cases, we don't know how this came about. And if you're saying that they've only recently found this diagnosis, I'm guessing these people kind of just develop it later on in life or are they born with it? So that's a really good point, Dr. K. Um, and it's really interesting because you're absolutely right. Most of the cases develop in later life. Mm. Um, and we know there are probably two stages in life in which patients start developing or develop aquagenic urticaria, the first of which is puberty. And that's, that's a really important developmental stage in life because lots of things are developing, lots of things are changing in your body and you're yeah. developing at such a fast rate and there's a high degree of maturation of your immune system. And it's at that stage where they develop this allergy, as it were, where they develop antibodies that drive an allergic reaction to something so mundane as water. Um, and similarly, in later life, that's the, from what we observe in the cases in the literature, in your 50s to 60s, you can also develop it. Um, and obviously, there are two different periods in your life where you have different changes, both in your growth rate and the development or changes within your immune system. Listen, Mr. Armin, that's actually fascinating. Let's just take a quick advert break. Let's catch our breath and then we'll reconvene in about 10 seconds. Brilliant. Welcome back, Mr. Ahmed. Thanks. I hope you uh, managed to get a, a quick sip of water because you're talking so much. I don't want you drying up on me. And I hope you're not allergic to water because that would be, <laughs> that would be a completely different spin on today's chat. So let me crack on. Let's, let's have a look at the, um, the, let's go back to the medical slides. You're talking about the pathogenesis. Tell us a bit more about the underlying sort of skin changes. And I can see like just off the cuff, from what looks like nice, healthy looking skin, I can see the layers. They suddenly just blow up. They just become swollen with edema. The structure looks like it changes. There's a lot of infiltrate and it must be very, very itchy. How like the itch must be so intense for these people, but then they've got to go about living their daily life. Like surely, I mean, how do you shower? How do you get out in the rain? Like how, like, a lot of people that were, 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 who I treat with cysts and lipomas, they often tell me the story how they've had to change their life to fit the disease. I'm guessing these individuals will do exactly the same thing, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So there are some really well-documented um, cases um, online um, one of which is Nicole from London. And this wonderful lady developed um, aquagenic um, urticaria in her 50s. And she's been a super keen cyclist all her life. Yeah. And, and after 18 months of investigation, they found out that she was allergic to water and her own sweat. Um, so she was started on antihistamines, but obviously um, when you go cycling, you sweat. and. You know, as you absolutely said, the more you're exposed to your allergen, the more likely you are to develop problems uh, and a reaction. And so for her, she carries a towel and some wipes to keep her skin clean and dry. Um, another chap, Brett, from up north, yeah. um, young man, like everyone, takes a regular shower. 
um, always takes his antihistamines first thing in the morning, gives it an hour or two for them to kick in, and then he has to have a shower and shave, which is normal um, for personal hygiene. And he's found that if he takes a shower for exactly three minutes and quickly dries himself off, um, he's able to avoid having a significant reaction. So like everything in life, you can make really small and specific changes which really help. This is fascinating. Listen, we're getting a lot of interest in this topic from the audience, so I'm wondering if we could um, take some questions from the ground. What do you reckon? Absolutely. That's a cracking idea. I've seen a few great questions, yeah. and I think we should try and answer some of them. Okay, well, if you see any, just pick some out. Yeah, so I've seen um, someone called Artlands on their own. Thank you for joining our our group chat and welcome to um, Medical Mysteries on Friday night and his question is are there any other um, allergies or problems like this and do they belong to a family of problems and to be honest that's a cracking question really interesting question and so unsurprisingly the this aquagenic um, uh, to carry it actually belongs to a family of physical conditions um, which are very similar and we've already mentioned heat rash um, or nettle rash they're very similar some people develop exactly the same problem with the cold or the heat mm. uh, and mm. sometimes even uh, salt so you can imagine salt in your diet driving this will be a disaster um, and a very small subset of the population develop as a result of stress um, so if you feel stressed, you suddenly develop a rash, and that's the common stem for all these problems. So if you find that you're developing a rash and your, your GP, your general practitioner, or your doctor is unable to get to the root of it, look around, see if there are specific allergens that you're exposed to in your environment or particular life stressors that are associated with your problem and are making your problems worse. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Thank you so much, Adlan, for one tuning in and asking a really amazing question we've got another viewer sweet bee honey tree your ward i love the name uh she says is it possible to be allergic to water when half of your body is actually made of water and i think it's more than half but i get your point sweet bee honey tree ward how can you be allergic to something that makes us again cracking question mm. cracking question mm. so like all allergies um it's the exposure to it at the, the skin or the respiratory level that drives the problem. Mm. Um, and so the immune reaction is driven very much at the level of the dermis. And Dr. Carl is the king of skin and skin problems, and the skin is a wonderful thing. And obviously it's prone to overreacting to certain allergens. And it's the abnormal identification of water as an allergen that is driving this process. It's not so much water within your body, and we know that up to at least 90% of your body is made up of water. Your cellular content is predominantly water, DNA material and proteins. Um, it, that isn't driving the reaction. It's the reaction at the level of the skin um, that's the issue. Interesting. So it's really the contact of, of, the, of the allergy, the allergen, onto the skin. Like an eight appears, we describe it in medicine, you know, like... We, we, I remember at medical school, they famously taught us about the, the eight P trilogy, you know asthma eczema and hay fever so this is this is an this is like one of those atps where your immune system has just kind of unfortunately resynchronized itself to be allergic to something which otherwise would be pretty benign water a lot of our viewers actually mentioning how they're suffering from real sweaty foreheads in summer and then that causes an itch is that is that like a spectrum or do you think that's something completely different having like itchy skin after a hot summer day is that is that a sign of an allergy could it be an intolerance to sweat or is it something else what do you think about that mr ahmed very interesting very interesting we know that you can develop a heat rash so when you're exposed to a hot environment um it's not uncommon to develop a heat rash similarly your sweat as we all know and we know that from you know, the lipomas and cysts that you're always removing contain um, a complex combination of minerals, um, specifically salts. And those salts in their own right can also drive a very focal irritation at the level of the skin. Um, and that may also be the problem. Mm -hmm. Sid G has a question. 
Um, I'm sorry if I'm missing loads of questions. Just keep typing them up as, as, we, as we move along. Sidji's asking, can this allergy to water lead to other allergies? Or really, what we're kind of saying is, are people who are prone to allergies or a, an, an allergy, can they be prone to other items? And I, and I guess the answer for that is simply yes, because the moment that your body starts to develop immune reactions to really kind of mundane issues like water or nuts or fish, whatever it might be, the chances are the immune system's hypersensitive and a little bit tetchy and it doesn't take much for it to kind of trigger it. So, I mean, I see it in my clinic, people will come in and they'll either say I have no allergies or they'll rattle off a list of allergies that they have. And I suspect, although aquagenic urticaria or, 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 or uh, a puritus is very, very rare, I suspect if we look in the grand scheme of allergies, then you're probably going to have a number of different allergies as opposed to having any at all. It's almost like a, a black or white thing. Would you agree? Is that something you see in your practice, Mr. Ahmed? Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, not a, um, I'm not a dermatologist, I'm not a general physician, but my understanding of atopian allergies is very much as what you've just said there. Um, it's a spectrum, and if you're allergic to one thing, you belong into the whole atopy family, um, and I think if you're prone to one thing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to develop an allergy to another, but we know things like hay fever, asthma, and eczema all fall within the same um, classification of medical problems. Mm -hmm. um, and they all pertain to uh, an overdrive or an overreaction in the immune system. So I certainly agree with you on that, Dr. K. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people loving the format. They're loving the uh, live chat. They're loving the medical education. They're saying not many, not many doctors on the pimple popping spectrum offering that kind of service to their fans. So that's really nice to hear. Um, a lot of people also wishing us all the very best of the new format. Um, a lot of people sipping water while they're watching this. A dangerous, dangerous activity. Dangerous, dangerous. I've just spotted another cracking question that yeah, I think we should yeah. answer. Um, Go for it. And we, we've got Lima very kindly from London just asking us a question. And that's Lima C. Can they shower? Absolutely. That's a great question. Um, as you can imagine, not being able to shower would be disastrous. Absolutely disastrous. Um, if they take, as I mentioned, prophylactic antihistamines, keep the shower to a very short period of time and then dry themselves off really quickly, mm. they reduce the chance of them developing an allergic reaction. So, so actually the, so the, the, the exposure time will also have an impact on the, on the reaction. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, that's, you know, that in itself is very topical at the moment with COVID. Everyone is talking about level of exposure um, and pathogenicity, and certainly with something like um, aquagenic urticaria, having a massive exposure. If you are prone to um, uh, being an, uh, uh, being allergic to water, is likely to drive the immune system crazy. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some great questions here. Susanna Burt, could this also be a food allergy, like people who eat too much garlic? It gets sweated out of their pores and smells the garlic, even though they didn't eat garlic. How does garlic fit into aquagenic urticaria, Miss Robert? I want to put that question to you. Wow, Sula, and that's, that's next level. That is next level. Sula Lali um, says she wants to hear more, and she's offering us watermelon. Is it? Is it? What about water in fruit? Is that safe? Is it the chlorine in water? A lot of people asking. You know, is it the chlorine? Is it? Is it water per se? What, what is it? What is going on? Can they eat fruit? That's interesting. That's interesting. So again, um, having looked at the literature, and there's a lot of work coming out of Japan on this because they've got quite a few case series. Um, they've observed that the level of reaction to the water mm. allergy is reduced when there are salts, um, a certain balance of salts, or acetone is present within the water. Um, so we know that pure water alone drives this allergy. Yeah. Um, and if you start mixing with other things, it seems to attenuate, reduce the degree of the allergy. Um, it may be there's something magical in melons that um, will prevent you from being allergic to them. Yeah. Bridget also wants to know, will these individuals grow out of it? 
it's interesting because I always say if, if, if an allergy comes on fast, it's likely to disappear equally fast. But it'll be with you for a period of time. So I suspect, you know, if they're not born with it, they may grow out of this. I, I can't imagine these people being afflicted for, for life. Yeah, I think you're right, Dr. K. Um, and I think you know a lot more about allergies and um, growing out of allergies than I do. And certainly in your practice, you would have seen a lot more patients um, who had childhood asthma that, that got better as they grew older. And similarly, eczema, that's improved. And, and hay fever, that seems to have got better. Wouldn't you agree? Potentially, yeah, potentially. Belinda from Cologne's got a question. Can immunotherapy help all allergies or only certain allergies? And that actually kind of makes me think about, you know, I, I know it's a bit off topic, but maybe there's a, there's a talk of what, what treatment um, the president of the United States received when he sort of contracted coronavirus. Do you know, do you know much about that, Mr. Ahmed, and, and what about monoclonal antibodies and immunotherapy in that respect? Um, I have to claim ignorance, and I think um, you, you might know a bit more about it than I do. No, um, that's so if maybe we'll say. Everyone, well, we can save that. I know a lot of people want to learn about long COVID and the treatments of it, so maybe we, we can cover a, a, a duet on that at a later date. Certainly, an interesting question about immunotherapy, but it's a big topic. Um, can they shower? Can they have a bath? That's Lima. See, you've answered that question already. Um, let's scroll through some more. Sulali, give examples um, reported by the National Health. Um, she wants examples. Can you give examples? Um, examples of what, um, Sulali? Sorry. <laughs> I, think, I think she just means the medical mysteries in general about the topics we may be covering in the future. Oh, we, we don't want to let the cat out of the bag. We've got to keep it no. a little bit uh, down tight so everyone remains surprised. Um, but keep tuning in and every Friday you'll definitely get a new medical mystery. So Patricia Harris mentions she has a nephew who's allergic as well and, and he showers um, several times a day. He's got an allergy who has to, has to kind of shower several times a day. He's allergic. According to Patricia, she's saying he's allergic to his skin cells. So I'm guessing like dead skin cells just causing him to be itchy and he has to kind of wash himself of those. That's interesting. Well, I would like to know more about that. Listen, Mr. Ahmed, I, I think we're going to wrap up today. I think we've covered your presentation. Thank you so much for that. Um, it was our first show. I mean, thank you so much for taking the time for joining uh, today. Uh, I think you're going to be joining us next week as well. Uh, so we're going to have that topic ready for everybody. I hope everybody has enjoyed it. Um, uh, let's let's go through and say some hellos. I think Mr. Ahmed, they they want you to also say hello. But Patricia Harris, welcome Cecilia Schwartz, Tracy McGrath, Keely Doll, Princess Amanda, Kara Hoyt, uh, Sid G, Ardnand, Donna Ken Adams, uh, Marion, Bridget Schumacher, Janet Bailey, uh, Luluna. Who else do we have in the house? Kara Hoyt, uh, Kim Barron, Jerry Flores. Uh, Curly SP, Rita Pam, Smart Invisalign, Dr. Sara, our, our resident orthodontist, welcome. Uh, Margaret uh, Brace, fascinating format, thank you for putting it together. Also, Medical Mysteries introduction was delightful. No more Pikachu. Or maybe, maybe we could find a Pikachu. I think I've deleted him. <laughs> uh, Susan Burke, could this also be a food allergy? Like, okay, we've had that question, that's brilliant. And Gian Medina, so many, so many wonderful guests. Like I said, we didn't know how it was going to pan out. We had issues with our audio to begin with. I think we've delivered a little bit of insight into people who are allergic to water. Demystified it, certainly. I think the science is out there. I think the slides helped. The, the images that you provided us, Mr. Ahmed, kind of demonstrated the skin rashes that these individuals have. And I, and I think if we pick some more interesting topics, and maybe if the audience have anything that they want to cover, then we'll be doing that as well. Remember, we'll be doing live uh, streaming for POPs and lipomas every uh, Wednesday and Sunday. The Friday will be the, uh, the, the, the mysteries. And uh, I think if that's everything, I, I think we'll say goodbye. Everybody's wishing me happy birthday. Thank you so much, Cecilia Schwartz. Until uh, Sunday, where we're going to be doing a a trilogy of videos. A lot of people want lipomas. We'll see. 
I've got some amazing uh, assists that I want to go through with you. So on Sunday, make sure to miss that. Until then, everybody, it's good night from me. And it's goodbye from me.